the amazing story of the coal-powered airplane and how that counterintuitive design led to nuclear-powered planes and scramjets. Hey, and welcome back, YouTube tribe. Thank you for letting me do this. I have learned so much by researching this film for you about a coal-powered aircraft. Back in the mists of time, before YouTube thought World War II was a sensitive issue, the Germans were running out of oil, so they needed alternative fuel for their aircraft. How about coal? <laughs> This was Germany's coal-fired aircraft. It's just a pipe with a basket of coal that they set on fire that could go over 300 miles an hour, and it really worked. So today, let's bust those Adam Savage lookalike links and see if the coal-powered aircraft is true or fake. Well, it's true. Oops, <laughs> but it has some issues. So you've got an aircraft sitting on the runway and you've got a pipe with no moving parts and you've got a basket of coal, which you light with your cigarette lighter and you sit on the end of the runway. You're not going anywhere. There's no thrust, maybe a bit of smoke, but it's not going to take off. So how did the coal-powered motor work? It worked great at 300 miles an hour. Let me explain. This is a jet pipe. This is a basket of burning coal. This is high-speed air going into the jet pipe and over the burning coal. The coal slightly heats up the fast-moving air and now warmer air comes out of the pipe. That's enough. That's a ram engine but <laughs> a big but it does only work at 300 plus miles an hour so how do you get to 300 miles an hour professor well with a rocket pack <laughs> this is what they did they put rockets at the back of the plane on the runway it took off <laughs> 300 miles an hour, oh, the rocket, and then air goes in the pipe, no moving parts, over the burning basket of coal, it heats up the air and it motors on, probably only slightly, but that was enough. If you're going at 300 miles an hour and you can make air come out just a little bit faster, you keep accelerating. I think they only saw a very slight acceleration. And of course, what happened when the uh, coal ran out? Ooh, you would lose all airspeed and you were going to land no other engine. But over 300 miles an hour, the simple, no moving part, coal-powered jet ram engine really works. And it all came out of total desperation because they needed a fuel for their airplanes. What happened at the end of World War II, Simon? Operation Paperclip. Lots of scientists, lots of engineers, lots of medical people all were transferred to the USA, including the designer of the coal-powered engine. Here he is talking English with the most amazing central casting German accent. He just looks the part. The designer of the coal-powered engine. We call this series of programs the secret of flight. And we could have probably called it also the mystery story of the streamline to be up to date. And you might wonder, what's all this secret about? Can't you buy yourself an airliner ticket, drive out to the airport, board the plane, take your seat, fasten your seatbelt, and with roaring engines, off 
you go. So when America and Britain absorbed all the German, that's my code name for the people who fought in World War II in Germany, because I can't really say what they really were because of YouTube advertising policy, took all the secrets and brought them back to Britain, Russia, and the United States. They looked at the designs, and not only was the coal-powered engine wacky, but innovative, the design of the plane was incredible, so they completed it and did this, the secret glide test. This is one of the first Delta Wing aircraft ever to fly, and it flies pretty badly. <laughs> But just look at this, American and British and French Delta Wing aircraft. Thank you, those German people. Top designers. But whatever happened to the coal-powered engine? It went nuclear. In the United States in the 1950s, we were in the Cold War and we wanted bombers to hover around the outskirts of the USSR for weeks without refueling. Let's have a nuclear-powered plane. Maybe we can reuse those ideas from that German bloke who invented the coal basket-powered airplane, but replace the coal basket with a reactor. And that's what they did. No moving parts. Air goes in, goes over a super hot nuclear reactor, comes out a little faster, and keeps the plane flying for months and months and months. But hang on, there's a slight problem. Uh, actually, a whole bunch of slight problems. A nuclear reactor in a plane? Actually, it's a great idea. And let me bust another myth. And that is, things become radioactive when they touch radioactive. No, they don't. Think of your banana. Well, the one you eat. Yeah, anyway, your banana. It's covered in bugs and has bacteria, so they put it in this special room where they turn it into a radioactive banana. Then you bring it home and eat it. But it's not radioactive, is it? Uh, no. The room's radioactive. There's alpha, beta, and gamma rays, probably from a cobalt source. And when it leaves the room in its little box, and then you eat the banana, the banana isn't radioactive. So radioactivity doesn't get transferred to another medium. You can die from alpha, beta, and gamma rays going through you and disrupting your DNA. But here, <laughs> I woke up with this story. Imagine your mate was standing inside the nuclear reactor and died because he destroyed himself with all the radiation inside the containment vessel. And you brought him home, <laughs> and you sat his sadly decomposing dead body on the sofa, and you sat next to him. So, there. He, he's not radioactive. You could watch TV with your headphones on next to your sadly decomposing friend, with no problem whatsoever, because radioactivity isn't transferred. And that means you can put air over a radioactive pile of horrible stuff and exit the air and it's perfectly clean. 
That's what they did at Windscale when they were turning uranium into plutonium in their graphite pile, their pile of rubbish. They blew air in Cumbria through the pile to cool it and up these chimneys. But nothing radioactive came out of the chimney unless there was particulate matter, and that's why they had Cockcroft's folly. But anyway, I love that story, and that's a separate story. So back to the coal-powered aircraft, where they've now got a reactor instead of a basket of coal. The air goes over the reactor and comes out not radioactive, but there's still massive problems. And the massive problem is the reactor in the pipe which replaced the coal basket, is giving out radiation in this sphere enough to kill the pilots of the plane. So that's not going to work, is it? So you need to shield it. And now we enter secret squirrel land. Shielding reactors is one of the most critical and secret things I could ever talk about. Now, you and I probably think reactors are shielded with lead and concrete, and they can be on the earth or even in a submarine, but it's not going to work on a plane because it's too heavy. How do you make a shield for alpha, beta, and gamma rays? Well, you don't. You make three shields. Alpha waves are stopped by paper. So a thin sheet quite near the reactor. Way back, beta rays are stopped by metal. So an aluminum, sorry, a al aluminum sheet is enough to totally stop any beta going through. And that's like a few meters away. And then all you're left with is the penetrating gamma rays that will go all the way through the cockpit and kill your crew. So you put the crew in a lead-lined cockpit as far as away as you can. The further away the re-engines are to the cockpit, the better. So that's what they tried. And did it work? Nah, it was a really stupid idea. The plane would have stayed aloft for months. I think the pilots would need a bathroom and maybe a new sandwich every couple of weeks. I don't know how that was really going to work, but it was never really introduced. But NASA do it. They can't put lead around their spacecraft. So they have secret stuff sandwiched in the wall of their Artemis spacecraft to stop rays going in and affecting Sean or whoever is in the spacecraft at the time. But that's all secret stuff. It's actually a type of plastic that absorbs radiation. But you didn't hear that here. So was the idea of the coal powered airplane ramjet engine dropped. Oh no! The whole concept of a ramjet that only comes into power when you get up to a certain speed is absolutely brilliant. All you do need is a basket of coal. I think it would work fine. Nuclear reactor? Nah. Or a small heat source. You've made a ramjet. But you can only go subsonic. As soon as you become supersonic, it changes from a ramjet into a SC scramjet. And that's what we have today. Super fast plasma coated scramjets, all powered by a basket of coal. Probably not. Peace humans, the truth is out there.